good evening. Welcome to our show tonight. Nowhere to run, nowhere to ride. And a scout. Dumb on So right. Even Junior can help. But with this invented as a race. That's great fun for the whole family. Because we're not just ordinary people. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Static Hour. I am your host, Rick Bravo, as always, and I'm happy today to be joined by none other than Justin. And and all right, these two young, fine folks at Palm Springs, at the Palm Springs uh, Rock Gallery open mic, where these two uh, co-host and run the, run the show. Very, very lovely, by the way, uh, the way they run this stuff, and very cool, cool people, but... Yeah, they were uh, gracious enough to join me on today on this podcast, and uh, welcome, guys. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. We are thrilled to be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very happy to be here. I'm thrilled to be here. This is a very nice spot. When you guys told me this place, I was like, dang, all thank right. Thank you. We are, we are, we're coming to <laughs> you from Billy Reed's in Palm Springs, yes. California. Billy Reed's. Uh, Fancy. Old, like, 1970s restaurant that really hasn't changed a lot, and it's one of our spots that we really like coming. So. It's yeah. a go-to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you guys usually get when you come here? Oh, breakfast. Uh, yeah, <laughs> breakfast? Eggs Benedict. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Arnold Palmer. It's uh, it's very, it's very classics menu. Like it's a trifold, three-page menu. So it's oh, whatever you're feeling, they've probably got it covered for you. That's right. And pie. Really good oh, pie. and pie. And, and pie. Yeah. yeah. There, the first time we came here, the the server, after we were done with our meal, came up and was just like. Do you want to see the pies? <laughs> and we were just like, I sure. <laughs> How about a nice big piece of cherry pie? A cherry pie? Best in the Tri County. And walked us over to the pie window where, when they're done with the pies, they put them all up in like a walkway, like in mm-hmm. between the tables. Mm-hmm. Like and a newborn baby viewing area. If they like, like you, they will show yeah. you where the pies <laughs> are. That's great. Yeah. Like, like upselling like crazy. Oh, right? totally. They know, yeah. They, yeah. they know you're going to want it. Yep. You know? and it's one of the places that it's, it's been here since like Palm Springs was kind of like a sleepy little town. And, mm-hmm. you know, oh. Still has very like classic Palm Springs vibes and not somebody who moved here to make up Palm Springs vibes. Like it's, this is just like, no. Yeah, Classic, it's built like, into the walls. Like yeah, yeah. I, like Holly, old school Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Tiffany yeah. lamps everywhere. Yeah, of, uh, See, my, my girl will absolutely adore this place. <laughs> she, I'm gonna have to bring her here one of these I, days. I feel like it's one of those places. Like if you're gonna see a ghost in Palm Springs, <laughs> it's probably gonna be the it's place. Just, place. <laughs> yep. You're just yep. like I smell eggs, and then it's like oh that's just Barry. He lives over in the corner booth. And you guys are seeing a ghost right now because I died last time I went on stage. I kinda, <laughs> I'm dead. I'm a walking ghost right oh, that's now. Just, that's, <laughs> it's how you learn, man. That's bombing right. is, bombing right. is part of the process. It, bomb, bombing is part of the process, but when like you've been doing like okay, like oh I think I got it. I don't think I'm a. It's, I might bomb, but I might, might not bomb crazy. But when you bomb crazy, you're like yeah. push this into perspective. Yeah. Oh, it's a uh, yeah. it's definitely a it's an ego blast, mm-hmm. and it's it's. It, we've been doing this a long time so it's like it's I feel like that full like just wah, like grade A bomb yeah it's it's <laughs> cleansing in a lot of ways mm. where it's just like yeah you know it's good to feel really good about yourself but it's really good to get checked by an audience yeah. that doesn't feel what you're bringing exactly and know that those people are out there and sometimes they don't know each other and they just wind up in the same room yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hear you uh, I've I did a show recently that was uh to a, I think it was 80% of the audience didn't speak English. Oh. Oh, at a, at a youth hostel in Santa yeah, Monica. Yeah, so I did this, I did this, so in the beginning of July, I was fortunate enough to do this show called, it's called Comedy in English. It's very fun to mm-hmm. do, especially from a comedian's angle. Uh, it's run by Mike Majid and Rivers Langley, who are like, mm. been doing comedy in LA for a long time, like really good, like Rivers has been a friend of ours for yeah. a decade. Um, they loved it, loved the show, but the whole time I'm on stage, like I, it just, it cut, cause it was, mm. it was just quiet. No so God. I get off stage and like the, the whole audience like came over, like that was great, thank you so much for coming. But like in really broken English. Uh-huh. And I realized, I realized that on stage and I was just like, oh, I hope this is what's going on. Everybody was just smiling politely <laughs> and nodding like, oh, that was, that's funny. Yeah. But not saying it out loud and I was just like, oh, and I mean, that's, you could be on stage bombing and not be bombing. Yeah. You just feel yeah. like you're bombing. Yeah. 
and they're loving it, but they don't. Maybe it's their first time at a comedy show, and they're right, like, they don't know. I don't want to mess them up, mm-hmm. so they're I don't want to laugh out loud. as an audience yeah. member, <laughs> yeah, right, because yeah. they don't know how to yeah, interact exactly. with There the needs performer. to be audience open mics. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is how we want our responses to, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's good. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's funny, because like, that's how I feel sometimes with like my uh, older side of the family when they came to see me do comedy. Mm-hmm. They, like, they don't really speak that good English. A couple of them, and then it was just like, yeah, oh, you did a good job. I was like, I was up there talking about dicks and all this nonsense, you know, and how like my heart gets broken, sad, funny stuff. But you know what I mean. But yeah, they were just smiling politely, which it reminds me of that whole. Um, Norm Macdonald told the story, but it was the one where um, he was saying that uh, Woody Woody Allen, just saying. Uh, Woody Allen got off stage and he had bombed horribly and someone came up to him and he's like man I suck I suck I suck and he was just like there's a difference between like absolutely killing and just making people smile oh yeah and at the end of the day if you you get like a smile or a chuckle you just get that one person that really gets that joke I mean that's that's more than enough for me you know what I mean I I feel like there's people that can weave that too that kind of start like um, I mean Mitch Hedberg is a perfect example Mm. like Mitch like I've been listening to Mitch Hedberg since I was in high school. Like, I didn't know what comedy... I didn't know there was a door or way to do this or any of that thing before I... Like, I had a friend give me a Mitch Hedberg album. Oh. And the first three or four jokes, you're like, what is going on? But by the end of the record, you're hanging on his every word. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, rest in peace, but it's Bob Newhart's a perfect example of that. Mm. Where it's Bob Newhart... Yeah, I love Bob. ...has a way of... You, like the most standoffish person in the room at a Bob Newhart show it wants to be his best friend at the end of the yeah. show mm. because he's so charming yeah, yeah. but he also invites that shy part of everybody in the audience to laugh and let let go mm-hmm. and right. that ma- I think that makes a good show regardless yeah. of if everybody gets it or not yeah. you get that with five people in a room of a hundred you've mm. done your job yeah 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 that's how I mean that Bob Newhart's a freaking great example because it's just like uh, you know hands in pockets and, 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 and you know you just help just rolling it off you know what I mean I've been watching him since I was a kid yeah I mean he's it when he died it was it was two people that are a lot younger than we are mm. I think it was a, a, a good indication of his reach because mm. like his reach to goes from everybody from Stephen Wright to Conan O'Brien mm. to every person that is doing smart comedy yeah is a is in, was a new art fan Right, right now. It feels weird to say, like, was instead of is, because it's, he's around for, he was working until the day he died. Like, yeah. And funny. Like, yeah, yeah. Not, God forbid, I never, I never want to be the, the Dick Dale of, like, <laughs> where you just feel like, just let the man rest. Yeah, like, yeah. You mean, you mean um, oh, uh, Dick Clark. Oh, yeah, Dick Clark. Like, Dick, Dick Dale, I think, was the surf rock guitarist. He was, the same thing, where it's Really, like, he went on too, too long. Oh, yeah. Too- I, I feel for the artist that is clearly not at least clearly over it, but still on stage. Mm. Newhart never did that. Yeah. Like it, he was doing things into his nineties that were still new and fresh and funny, and clearly came from a love of doing it, mm-hmm. rather than a, I got to spin this wheel to get right. to get my my money through rent or whatever. Yeah. He made his point, like, the first time I've ever seen him was on The Simpsons. Like, he was, like, a little cameo on The Simpsons doing a funeral yeah. for, uh... Oh, it was the, I'm, I'm just waiting for another funeral to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is like... such a funny line. Bob Newhart. Um, <clears throat> see, uh, to, to tell you the truth, I'm, um, I'm just, I'm just killing my time here. I'm, I was waiting for a, a well, a, a different, different funeral to start. I'll handle it. Bob Newhart, everybody! Oh, um, <clears throat> well, though, you know, though I, I, I started my career several years before uh, Krusty, so, you know, I could never really have learned anything directly from him. Uh, still, I, I think in a way, in a very, very meaningful way, that, uh, that I, that, uh, all of us have, um, have learned from him. You know that is by by being a, a clown on television for 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 so many years, even even though you know many of us we we didn't we didn't watch a show. 
Uh, thank you. And I was just like, who the hell is this guy through there? I was like young and I just like yeah. YouTubed him and I was like, oh, this guy's great. You know, and all this stuff he does. And he's like, that's him. That's 100% him. And I like the avenue that animation provides for classic, you know, mm. standard comedians. Like, because my first exposure, even though there was Nick at Night, but like when I was like nine, ten, it was the Rescuers movies. Yeah, mm. and yeah, he like was my, one of the guys in the Rescuers. He, he was one of the little mice. Oh, and yeah. my, my, I remember <laughs> sitting in the living room watching this movie, and my friend Matthew's dad walked by, and he just caught the voice, and he's like. That's Bob Newhart, <laughs> and it was just like, oh wow. So like, you know, did you hear you talk about the Simpsons or yeah, like, yeah. you know? But it, it, it's just nice that there are these like pop culture equalizers that exist for yeah. us. Because I feel like in in our grandparents' generations, it was like if you weren't tuned in to like the Tonight Show mm. or like whatever, then you kind of missed out. Absolutely. But for us, we had all these different like opportunities to bring us to, back to bring us back and to see things and like these you know, for featuring those people too. Right, yeah. and it was a cool thing to know about too. Mm. Like cause, that was eight o'clock you know, instead of eleven. O'clock. Right, right, yeah. or, or with Nick and Knight, it's like no, you got to watch Nickelodeon, stay up mm. late, and then you get you know tuned into all this cool stuff so yeah, yeah. And, and same thing with the Simpsons it's like they were they were taking the things that influenced them and it's like okay yeah it's a little cameo on this on this thing but like they're paying like respect to them yeah. in, in showing a new generation like mm. hey man look at the credits because yeah. like whoever's well, playing these little parts yeah. they have a whole body of work that you should really look at because it's it's foundational it's just and awesome that, that, that being said the Albert Brooks thing it's like right, my first right. experience with Albert Brooks is yeah. Scorpio, Scorpio from The Simpsons oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and then to realize to open that catalog up is it's insane yeah I mean it's like the most heartfelt and that's he's one of the first people like when you like kind of look at the timeline of it where it's like he could do these uh, just such sentimental, heartbreaking monologues mm. that end with a fart joke. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. he's so good at that. I mean, his name's Albert Einstein. Like that's his real name. Oh, is no Albert way. Einstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His it's, parents knew what they were doing. <laughs> right, right. And his brother is Super Dave Osborne, who is like. Oh yeah, I know. From uh, he was the surrogate in uh, in Arrested Development. And then, yeah, Arrested Development. Yeah, one and of then the Curb, Curb, he, he was the Funkhauser. Mm -hmm. But he yeah. had his own gig, like Super you know. Super Dave Osborne. Aside from that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's. I've always gravitated to sm towards smart comedy. I think like, Emily and I, when we first met, mm. was just this, like, we definitely shared a love of the same veins of, like, what makes you laugh. Yeah. It's, so, it's so primitive. It's also, like, how can you get to love somebody if you don't know that you're on the same page humor line? Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, like, your your online dating profile was a dick joke. Yeah, yeah. And I was just <laughs> um, like, all right. All right. <laughs> So, Let's hear it. So, we've, so been, we've been out of the game for a long time. Um, <laughs> recently, I was so talking to cute. another local comic that was talking about dating, and I, I meant to say Tinder. And I said, he's like, I met this girl. And I was like, oh, would you meet her on Tumblr? <laughs> and I can see it. <laughs> and was just immediately like, that's not the one. I felt 140 years old. Yeah. Uh, well, we got together like, you know, 14 years ago before you could swipe, we, swipe we met on right. We met on OkCupid, yeah. which for the nerds out there is the free a, one. It is an HTML based web page <laughs> where you would fill in information in words. Yeah. On uh, cyberspace. Yep. Yes. <laughs> this was www dot, uh, <laughs> but this was uh, my. It's what was what was the first thing that people notice about you? And, was, and to to answer your question, like the the joke was like you really you know you laid it out there yeah. like this is what I'm about, this is where I'm at with my life, and I appreciated the honesty. And then you tagged it with, oh wait, this is a dating profile. Uh, I I have a compassionate spirit and a huge cock. And I was like, all right, if both this are, guy's reaching both are out real. To me, <laughs> both are I was still being honest. <laughs> but led with the heart, in with the dick. Man, you gotta seal the deal somehow. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ain't nothing worse than putting that out there. Yeah. What are you gonna pull and your dick out at the beginning? No, you buy food first. <laughs> you talk to the person on the phone. You go, hey, what movies are you into? You end the night, maybe with your pants off. Yeah. 
you can't tell them you have a huge cock and then they, they you surprise like surprise. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you, you can't be not. like look at my yeah. giant look at my yeah. giant dick. You like the lion king? <laughs> like yeah, you gotta. It's not the bait and switch you want. Well, yeah. No. yeah. You see that? You switch see that. and bait. Bait switch and switch. switch. It's like when when girls like when girls see like. Oh, I saw a spider. It was huge. And you go, and it's like a three-inch spider. Like, if that's huge, then I must be enormous. Yeah. Like, damn. Like, you know like, I mean? can I get your number? Like, what are you doing later? <laughs> well, I'll take you... care of the gigantic spider. <laughs> well, that's cool. You guys answered my question, like, how you guys met. And then yeah. through, uh, you know, those similar likes. Real quick, Arrested Development, one of the greatest shows of all time, in my humble opinion. Um, did kind of fall off towards the end, but I still love that show. Oh, but, yeah. We're big th- first three. Like the yeah. first three seasons are mm-hmm. like the minute they started doing like time jumps and stuff, I kind of lost interest. Mm-hmm. But it's like that when it was on na- like network television, yeah. just the it, genius. That's a genius show, dude. That show's just like boom, 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 RPMs and oh, jokes. Yeah. And like if if you turn away from one second, you miss like three jokes, yep. one facial yep. impression, mm-hmm. well, imp- uh, expression, and all this other stuff. We were uh, just talking about that like last week, and like not even watching the show, but just reminiscing our favorite. Yeah. Through lines throughout, rest, like the Lucille, um, the the doctor that is always like says the wrong thing. First, oh yeah, yeah. Where yeah. he when Buster loses his hand, yeah. he comes out and he's he tells, gonna be all right. Tells the Blue family that he's gonna be all right, yeah. Yeah. and they go, "Oh my gosh, thank God!" And he goes, "No, he's gonna be all right. He <laughs> lost his left hand, which is." Which who was also from a he's from Upright Citizens Brigade. Yeah. Uh, Ian ooh, Roberts. Ian Roberts. Mm-hmm. So Ian Roberts is. Like I grew up watching his stuff. Mm. That's the doctor from Arrested Development. Was one of the founders of the UCB Upright Systems mm. show. Mm. Hilarious improviser. But yeah. but to your point with Newhart, it was like it was clearly another example of when you have like sincerity mm-hmm. and dedication to the craft. Yeah. Like, and it's my understanding that most of the people like on that cast, either at the time or afterwards, went on to do like really acclaimed dramatic stuff too mm. because like you know quality and commitment yeah. is just the same regardless as to you know what you're you're doing but it's it's interesting that it applies to both comedy and dramatic stuff and to make us not sound 80 years old mm. <laughs> um, the for the kids out there um, <laughs> the there's a Pixies reference to oh. so the, like when people talk about the band the Pixies, love favorite. there is uh, it was they call it the band that launched or the, it was the band that launched a hundred bands yeah yeah because there might have been fifty people in the room but all of those fifty people started bands to try to be that band Radiohead Weezer yeah. all that's how shit. comedy works it's it's <laughs> if you see somebody that's that's that hits you deep enough to where it's like this person is saying things that I am embarrassed to talk about mm-hmm. and is making them funny is making light of these things it makes you more it makes you more willing to go out and tell that to strangers right personally yeah, yeah. if you're being honest with yourself it's it's your you find those comics like when you start to do this and you start to do comedy is like these are these are people that i i'm right or die for like this is a person that i will follow through their career because of how deeply some stupid throwaway joke hit me. Right. Um, Dan Soder is a perfect example. Oh, because, yeah, yeah. So in in his HBO special, Son of a Gary, mm-hmm. he talks about the Colorado accent because he grew up around snowboarders. And I grew up around snowboarders in Northern <laughs> California. Uh-huh. And he goes, I never thought I had an accent. And then he mimics the accent that he heard on the X Games. Uh-huh. And he goes, nope, that's it. That's, uh-huh. that's our accent. It's it's such a deep joke because it's like oh my gosh that's everybody I grew up with mm. just like I want to thank these guys and this guy and like it's it's those jokes that make you feel so comfortable that you're you're the only person in the room they're talking to yeah it's like oh my god that's amazing well and and one of like the biggest like most pleasant surprises that I think we because we've talked about it that we both encountered when we came here was the fact that like there's there's an audience that appreciates comedy. That's There's a not, hunger, and and these people are not interested in in pursuing a career of it. Right. Yeah. So they know as much as we do, and they come out to see the shows. Yeah. And I remember when when you were talking about like, or, or when we was talking about bombing and like just having a silent kind of thing. I remember doing shows out here, and I made like just like a little aside comment about like. You know, something didn't land the way that I wanted it to, and it was a little quiet. And I just tossed it aside by saying, like, "Well, you know, they 
don't all work or like yeah, something yeah. to that effect yeah. and like one of the girls in the audience made a point to like come up to me and say no just so you know yeah even though it was quiet out there I knew exactly what you were talking about and it, I was just like so like honored that like she wanted to take the time to do that but like that that was like a really interesting revelation for me because I feel like you know oh thank you I'll, I'll try not to shake the table no no you're oh. just leaning back oh okay wanted to make sure that you were hearing hey, you because you're making yeah. a good point um, I'd scoot you forward but we're not on wheels so <laughs> like you know because you and I met in in Los Angeles where yeah. I'm from mm -hmm. and this is like you know a big industry town yeah. and stuff like that um, and you know, and we had met like and, and, three and, and, years and, after I started doing comedy. But to come to like you know what's you know for lack of a better term like a a, a local scene mm -hmm. or like you know an outside market kind of thing that's like adjacent to all these places and to still have like the perspective that you would if you were a professional. Mm -hmm. It was it yeah. was just really awesome to see. So like I I would just all that to say like. Don't underestimate the audiences at these yeah. like local scenes, man. Because the people who come out, they know quality. Yeah, that and that's, and that's a good thing because you never like, I like we all grew up with comedy. I know what I like. Like Maria Bamford is like one of my favorites. Oh, love her. Too. Love like, her. Like, Maria is amazing. I really, I do want to get married. Oh, it just sounds great. <laughs> you get to go grocery shopping together. And rent videos. And then the kissing and the hugging and the kissing and the hugging underneath the cozy covers. Mm. Oh, man. Sometimes, though, I'm worried that I'm not. Sometimes I'm worried I don't want to get married as much as I'd like to be dipped in a vat of warm, rising bread dough. I might feel pretty good too. Mm. She's yeah. like, um, if I had top three comedians, it's a toss up between everyone else, but she's always like in. The she's top. always in the list. I'm, yeah, yeah. we're yeah. such huge fans. Like, we will go, we will drive hours to go see Maria. Yeah, and just because we're. She's been there our whole lives. Like yeah. she's she's one of the reasons I do comedy is Maria Bamford. Wow. So it's like she's great. And it's like I've had I've had the privilege to share the stage with Maria. No, and I, yeah. dude, I'm jealous. So it's that, that's like my goal. She's amazing. And she's also she is one of the reasons that she makes being honest on stage okay. Yeah. That's important for this. Well, yeah. and she's generous with her craft yeah. without being a creep about it, too. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. You know? so. And has been around and survived <clears throat> through the, what, the giant Me Too eliminate all the creeps wave where it's like Maria's still doing it. And it's yeah. survived the toxicity of, of that and been through all of it and before it. Yeah. So yeah. it's like watching the resilience of somebody that does this for a living. That's still very so good. vulnerable and open and, you know... To her description, flawed. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's it's really like I don't want to say inspiring because that sounds cheesy, but like aspirational. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that that, that feel, still feels cheesy, but I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, she's transcendent. If, yeah. if, <laughs> if it's the math equation, put two cheeses on top of each other, you can. It's less cheesy. Yeah. Different smells. <laughs> With bombing, going back to what you were saying about like feeling like something wasn't hitting right or something like that, and going back to what you were saying first, like uh, bombing doesn't feel good. Right. Yeah. But honestly, sometimes bombing's not for you. Bombing's for the person in the audience that sees you get through it and make people laugh twenty seconds later. Yeah, yeah. Where it shows confidence. It shows people that you can fail on stage, which sometimes gives a person in the audience that courage to get up there. Mm -hmm. And to try. It could also be That's the, why we do what the we do. audience of that venue yep. telling you what they want to see. Yeah. Or saying, I speak French. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes way more sense because I had no jokes in French. That's right. You right. just look funny, so I was laughing. Yeah. 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 I did a lot of this. People were like, hey, the Muppet uh, comic, Jerry very Lewis. funny. Yes, yes. Well, like, it's, like, we're speaking about Conan O'Brien. He's like, he's also like, I, if it was like, in terms of comedy, it would be like Conan, Maria in there, and then a stand-up comic. But right. in terms of comedy, but like you were saying, like Conan, yeah. 
th- he he throws back to the bomb new hearts to totally. all, everyone like to all these other people uh, he's a looney tune yeah, yeah and i love yeah. that and so when i go up on stage and it's i try to kind of incorporate that just to you know i want people to my goal is to get some people to get gut gut wrenching i want to yeah, do yeah. what what these people do to me oh, and yeah. conan conan when he does the whole like <laughs> yeah the <laughs> dancing yeah does it do it It's just like it kills me every time, and I, I I love them so, yeah. Like when I went to 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 your guys' mic, uh, Rock Gallery in Palm Springs every Wednesday. Wednesday at seven. Sign up on Slotted.co. Rock Gallery, Rock Gallery open mic. <laughs> when I went, when I went first went to your guys' mic, I, yeah. I had reached out to you guys. Yeah. And I was like, hey, you know, I didn't get on Slotted, but you guys managed to put me on. Mm-hmm. But sign up on Slotted because that it fills up and the shows can go long. So try your best to sign up on Slotted. They're gracious enough to get you in if they can. Mm-hmm. But it's filling up and there's more to come. I know that because I'm a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, it's usually between 24 to 48 hours after we clear. It's a very popular mic yeah. in town. We're so grateful of that. It's you got about two days at like maximum to sign up. But if it's your first time doing comedy. Feel free to contact yeah, let us. Let us know. We will we will gladly put you in the bucket. We'll yep. get you up there. It's uh, we're not opposed. Like we want to be, we want to be the first person that's supportive to, yeah. to totally. people. Yeah. That's yeah. nothing makes me happier than being being a. Nothing makes me happier than being surprised by people telling me it's their first time doing comedy. Yeah. And coming to us first, mm-hmm. like that's such a big thing because it's. It's not easy, like, and people know that, yeah. and it's like you could feel it when people come up and they're like, "This is the first time I did that." That's such a vulnerability, yeah. and thank you so much for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. it's it's a great it's a great room, great. Oh, it, it has like these vibes, not as grandiose, but the inside, <laughs> the inside just it just feels like it's a small like we it's small ceilings, mm-hmm. so it's like it keeps the laughs inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so it's kind of like. Yeah. You can the, you can have a lot of fun there, and it feels very cozy. When you're the, the, the laughs are sporadic when I went up on stage, <laughs> but it, it was one of those things where I I, I work a lot, mm-hmm. and so I hit the my, and then the fact that it's so close to where I live, yep. it just makes it even like oh, so I'm gonna be more showing up more. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I went, it had, I had been like maybe three weeks or a month since I have done comedy, mm-hmm. and yep. I have shows coming up too. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, well, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. So I made room for that. And then when I went up, I was like, okay, let me try some of the some of the the A jokes. First time, want to make a good impression. Totally. Yep. And they were there, but like my my um, the rust. I was shaking off the rust, and it was good. And I still got laughs. And then I looked back at the footage, and I can see like, oh, like a couple laughs here. Like there was people laughing, mm-hmm. but it was more so where it's like, okay, I've I've done these jokes. They've worked. They've killed. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I've done it. It's either my I don't feel them. Yeah. I don't. I don't feel this. Like, my heart's not in it. Mm-hmm. But ain't nothing better than bringing some new stuff, and then that kills. Yep. Yeah. So like, how like how how much material do you constantly like um, repeat? Because I know you're supposed to like go through a process where you repeat them for a while, and sure. then you and then until you you get enough build up for like a 20 minute thing, and then you can like spread it out. But like, how often do you guys like? just start with a whole new set right you know what I mean like well for for me I feel like if you're if you're building for an hour mm. there's always stuff that you can polish mm. but but one of my um, idols like really early on was Phyllis Diller mm. and I heard that she had like a um, like a Dewey decimal system like Roll uh, like a card catalog. Card catalog yeah. with um. all of her jokes written on index cards, and it's it's that thing of like having stuff that you just have that's an ingrained in you that you can pull up for any situation mm-hmm. that seems fresh in the moment. Right. Like Don Rickles was another good example of that, where like in the room with him, it feels like you're hearing it for the very first time. Yeah. But like this is as old as like the Bible for him. Right. Right. So like. I think it's important, like, to, like, I, I don't feel like a lot of the times, like, I have a choice in, in doing this. I feel like this is how my brain works. Mm. These are the comments that I make. So, you know, I don't want to just 
have this material for nothing. Yeah. So I'm always like, you know, because there's current events and everything else, and mm -hmm. like you're always like writing about what's happening. But I think it's like maintaining that balance of like bringing something new that you're working on, mm -hmm. seeing how the stuff that you used to have or originally like started with melds into mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And like, but but the, again, that's just my goal is mm -hmm. like having like you know building towards getting an hour together. But I think that like. It's, it's good to, like, not to have rules, but be okay not having rules, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. if that makes sense. Is, and It's such a personal thing. Yeah. But it's also, like you were saying, and we were both like, yeah, it's absolutely, that's how you do it. Where it, I'm new to this room, I'm going to throw a couple of jokes up right, front right. to kind of get them on my side. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can try my new stuff. Yeah. Thousand mics. I've done that on. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also I've done seven phases of that same thing in a different way and doing mm. different stuff. It's all molding. Yeah. Um, because something that uh, I I am starting uh, this week with the mic okay. is um at the end of the mic we're going to ask everyone to vote for their favorite performer mm. and the top five we're going to give on Sunday ten minute spots. Oh, and it's because like the rock gallery has been so generous about offering the space up for stuff specifically like Abe said to us when when this all started rolling that like I want to see comedy and I want to see shows that are not just the like every other show that you have in the valley yeah. and so like with that spirit it's you know you know it's hard to get 10 minute showcase spots mm -hmm. but that's and we want to reward the people that come out right, right. Yeah, where yeah. it's like this feels like this feels like the evolution of the mic, where yeah. it's like, I, I, I came up in comedy with fresh faces shows, like right. people that you haven't seen. Right. This is a really good for us, a way for us to garnish that internally. Totally. Where it's like, we have a guy that's that travels a lot around named Dave Thompson, who's great mm -hmm. and comes to our mic a lot. Yeah, really. Helps. I would I I would love to see like Dave works really hard on his jokes. Mm -hmm. It would be our honor to put Dave on the skillet show. And know that it didn't come from us. Right. It came from. It's this validation of like right. people really favorite. like your joke, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. You, they want to come see you on Sunday. That's yeah. kind of what we want this voting totally. thing to be. That's for. crazy. And also yeah. using it as like a, as a tool because the Rock Gallery is really easy to film at, mm -hmm. and then you can submit for festivals and stuff like that. You also, know? that being said as well, yeah. Uh, there's a big thing with especially with people starting out is like I don't want people I know to see me doing this. Oh, okay. It's the weirdest. I'm the same way. It's, it's, it's the, the weirdest way. thing where it's like, I want to go talk to people, not people I know. Right, mm -hmm. right. Give me this. I want to go yell at people at a bus stop. It's yeah. like, it's that type of person. Yeah. But there, you can kind of break that part of your brain and be more supportive of yourself mm -hmm. and be more gracious of yourself by feeling like you earned it, right. by feeling like, I, I'm not inviting people in open mic. I'm inviting you to a show that I'm booked on because they liked what I was doing here. Right, right. The improv does something super similar. So if you do really well at the improv open mic, mm. they take three people and they mix them into the improv lab shows. Yeah, yeah. There's professional comics now that started doing that. I, I want to do really well at this open mic so I can get this little spot so I can show people a little more of me. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like, that's super important. That's mm. important to comics. It's important to people. Yeah. Um, Sunday skillet, Sunday rock skillet. gallery. Skillet. Uh, it's gonna be dope. Uh, I'm very excited about it. Well, uh, and and like when you were talking about, because we we understand when we put it up on slotted, there's only 12 slots. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's your first time or you show up on time, at if you the drive mic, like, if you an hour out, and a half, we're gonna put you in the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. It's just gonna happen. So don't oh, yeah. don't let yeah. a full list. You know, be your excuse. For if not you have a, if out. you are, if you have a layover from Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> near Palm Springs we Airport, yeah. hell, I'll come pick you up from the airport uh, yeah. if you want to come do like a quick ten minutes. It got to be like a professional comic, but like, yeah, yeah. but but you know, we, <laughs> and I was gonna say like, damn, any open mic, it's <laughs> just like I have thirty people coming that are at the airport right now. Yeah, but like, this, to, we're to, an open mic and comedy shuttle, everybody. Right. Mom, I made it. I'm doing a show in Palm Springs. <laughs> But when you sell the cows, <laughs> when, when you approached us to, to do the this podcast, like, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for calling us young. Love that. Yeah. Uh, and and like you were very complimentary, and I feel like 
you know, everything that you were saying positive to us about like the mic and just the vibe in general, it's like, it, it's really because that's the show that we want to go to, mm -hmm. that yeah. we want to be a part of. And one thing, one thing they do, which I do love, is they don't make you feel awkward about pulling up your tripod and setting it up. They even, uh, they even allow you like a few moments, they'll call your name and they'll be like, all right, you got your camera ready, going, going, you're recording, and then so, they bring you up again. It's since beautiful. you were with Thank us you. last time, we've actually even streamlined it further than that. We have an on-deck system yeah. now. now so there's, so yeah. now, right up front, we pull two names. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The first name we pull is going up. The second name we pull is on deck. Yeah. So that way, it's giving you that time mm -hmm. to quietly set your stuff up to streamline the yeah. show. So you know that you're on deck, so it gives you like a five-minute window yeah. to get your stuff framed. So as somebody that tapes all of their sets, it, what I always do is I start the camera because my, my brain is so stupid, yeah. I will forget that I'm recording, yeah. <laughs> and then I have a better set. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. will get yeah. in my head if I hit go, and then I run on stage. Oh, totally. right. yeah. So I want to try to give people that little couple of minutes of comfort yeah. before you have to go up and deliver. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I remembered what I was talking about oh. when, when you're doing okay. so, it. So okay, this is it's like there's plenty of comics who've said it. The, the most bore the the best thing you can do with comedy is explain the funny and things mm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, I have so many strategies and methods, of ways that I use an open mic. An open mic is a gym, but it's a gym that's taking yes. place inside of your set. Yeah. So there's tons to do. You could, it could be a leg day, it could yeah. be an arm day, you could be in the pool, you could be surfing safari in the sauna, like it could be a lot of different things. Or P90X, like a lot could, of, yeah. 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 <laughs> or, we, we made the mistake of trying to get in shape right before COVID. And <laughs> we found out that the lockdown was happening in a sleep yoga class, oh my God. which was like an hour long. It's but all hot and sweaty. No. no, 20 minutes in, the teacher started having a nervous breakdown because it was their only source of income. Uh, but it's a relaxing yoga class. Oh my God. I did trying to take it to the stage, but it was like, she was like, okay, and now some word association. So our whole joke was, and she was like a rolling brook and like all of these like peaceful things. But our joke was that eventually she'd forget that she was doing that and things would just start creeping in. And she's like, rent is due, <laughs> eviction notices. And we're like, wait, this is starting to stress me out now. Sirens, right? yeah. chaos, yeah, chaos. grocery stores are Impending out of stock. Impending pandemic, <laughs> toilet, toilet paper, paper. shortage. Yeah. It was so much of this thing of, um, it's so funny to me because it was like we were like everybody dirt smart people during covid were like i'm gonna get in shape we were trying to get in shape <laughs> and then we were like let's see how many pizzas we can make oh my god so open mics yeah. specifically an open mic is a gym mm. it is a gym for you it is not for the audience but the audience being there is what you need so mm. it's this weird dichotomy when I go into an open mic, the smartest thing that I've done at open mics and the thing that I try to do the most is I walk in with material I have, mm. but material that needs to grow yeah. on both sides. So what I'll do is I'll come in with a premise that I've been working on, a premise that I have a couple of minutes on that I kind of want to try these tags out on the end or like I want to try to weave into it a little differently right. because I'm working a transition from something else. I'm trying to build chunks. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to build 12 minute thematic chunks mm -hmm. that have jokes sporadically throughout this. Try to get the highest jokes per minute. Mm -hmm. I want you to laugh three or four times mm -hmm. per yeah. minute. Because I'm a storyteller, that's pretty long. Yeah, but yeah. I want you to laugh while I'm doing this. Yeah. The best way to do that is get you comfortable before I start telling my main joke, to tag that at the end with three or four jokes that are gonna peter out that laughter that maybe I can transition to another set. Mm -hmm. Chunk meets chunk meets chunk mm -hmm. meets chunk. Yeah, yeah. I work in the rules of fives. Yeah. So I am constantly working on five minutes. Right, right. But that five minutes, I'm working on that. As soon as that five minutes is perfected, I try to get it to match with this five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Now I got 10. Yeah, yeah. Once I got 10, it's easier to get to 15. Once I get to 15, 20. 25 is a feature set. Yeah. So if you are applying for comedy clubs, things like that, if yeah. you have a tight 25 minute set that you have recorded and you can hand to a comedy club, you can get booked on paying gigs to go make people laugh because they trust you now. Yeah. Right, right. The rules of fives will help anybody work these things out. So jokes are great, jokes are funny. Totally. But if you make those jokes now stick together, mm. yeah. make it a little bit. Mm. Little bits become chunks, yeah. chunks become hours. Right. Mm -hmm. So. There is a method to this. It doesn't work for everybody. Everybody's a little different. Sure. 
the more you can surprise people with the way that you get them to go into those jokes, yeah. you know, you get people like I love watching people pull magic tricks on me. Yeah. yeah. Like I love to see my card come up in a joke. Okay. Which I by that I mean like I love to see myself represented in a three or four minute long story uh -huh. that I can I can be in that story because I'm represented in that story by either them telling it or their stupid friend that gets them into trouble or mm. whatever it is. Mm. I love Kyle Kinane. Kyle Kinane is, is my favorite comedian, hands down. Okay. I watch a lot of comedy. 80% of Kyle's jokes hit me in this weird dirtbag part of my brain that I'm like, that's, that's <laughs> my guy because everything he says hits my heart. Right. It's not stuff I have to think heavily about, but damn if he doesn't make me think. Yeah. Mm. So there's, there's people out there for everybody. Kyle might not be your cup of tea, but if you find that comic that you really like, it perpetuates your individual voice totally. because it makes that voice more comfortable. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's a, it's a long diatribe, but no, like, no, no. like I said, we've been doing this a while, so yeah, it's like, yeah. I feel very strongly about this. I am passionate about this, where this, this is not a thing that I come to lightly because I, desperately want to make people laugh right not because of the self-validation but because it's a connection it's something that helps me with a microphone in hand mm. talk to the person in the back of the room that maybe is a little scared to do this and now they see themselves up there yeah and that's what did it to me sometimes a little bit for the self-validation oh no <laughs> that's there i just don't want to talk about it because okay. it's embarrassing got it, got it. i want everybody to love me but yeah. you know it's people come to this for different reasons yeah yeah, yeah. I feel like I've got something to give all the time, which is why I love doing it. It drives me. I feel like what what you just said is what a lot of newer comics will like always go up to like a comic that's been doing it for a while. They always want like, well, what should I do? What should I do? What you just laid out is pretty much that's a good blueprint because that's I, I I totally agree. That's how I did it. And like I've I've worked in clubs. Like I yeah okay, that's I how I got to clubs is yeah. I I worked one joke and then I put a joke next to it put a joke mm. next to it and three months down that road I'm at the same open mic I do all of the time this is Portland Oregon okay. Portland Oregon 2009 I am doing the same mic but I'm starting to get people that are laughing at my jokes that I don't know yeah, yeah. it's a weird weird feeling like the minute you start to notice that strangers are with you yeah it's so powerful. It's like, oh my God, what is happening? Mm -hmm. It's confusing, but it's also really fun. I got asked after an open mic, like, hey, come down to the club because I want to talk to you about dates. I did not know what that meant. Um, <laughs> I was like, being oh, asked. Yeah. Well, so I was being, I was being asked, <laughs> I was being asked to host the club. Right. I was being asked to come on as a host because yeah. I had an energy yeah. that was able to fit their bill already so the way that the club it's like it's a it's called harvey's comedy club it's not there anymore it was in portland oregon it's not a great club don't let people tell you that places aren't great to work at if someone is going to pay you to tell jokes work there until the checks bounce and then get out yeah, yeah. but like it it was the most gratifying thing to me to be like i made something that people want mm. i made something that make people feel good right that's not drugs. So it's this whole thing of that gratification of somebody coming up, even no matter what it is, saying, I like what you're doing. Can you come do this here? Yeah. That's the first guide to booking. It feels so good. So the first time you've done, did, you did stand up comedy. Yeah. Like how that, like, what, well, first off, I'm gonna ask both of you guys, mm -hmm. what, of course, yeah. what, made, what made you like wanna do comedy? And then how did your first open mic go? So, the first time that I wanted to do comedy, it was, I, I saw, so I call comedy a secret garden because you find the door when the door finds you type mm -hmm. thing. I was at a coffee shop. I was one of these people that listen to podcasts all the time. Mm -hmm. So I listened to a lot of WTF. Mm -hmm. I listened to a lot of the Nerdist and it was like when the Nerdist podcast was really, really small. Yeah, yeah. And they would talk about open mics. And at the time I lived in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. There was no open mics that I knew of. Yeah. That will come back. Um, I really wanted to do it. I was at this coffee shop, just broke, had no hobbies, like was really kind of down on myself at the mm -hmm. time. And I was like, man, I really wish there was an open mic here. And remember thinking that to myself. I was leaving the coffee shop and I literally saw on the ground <laughs> a flyer for Helium Comedy Club. Oh, yeah, Helium. Called them. 
Yeah, yeah. And they were opening the club in Portland. This is pre Helium Portland. Yeah. Called Philadelphia and called this, God bless her, some girl in Philly and was like, hey, when's your open mic? <laughs> and she was like, are you calling me from Oregon? And I go, I am. And she goes, the club's not open until August. This is June. And she goes, it's probably going to be on Tuesdays. That's when ours is. She was talking about the Philly club. Yeah. So I was like, great. It gives me three months. Okay. To watch everything I could, digest comedy, kind of, oh, this is had all, everything written out, was ready to go. I go to Helium Comedy Club, I sign up, it's a list of 20 comics, there's 45 comics signing Holy up for 20 shit. spots. And immediately was like, shit. I you met know. some of my best friends in that room. I met Funches, I met Carmel, I met Sha Sean Jordan, mm. Richard Bain, all of these people. I got up and was just like, what, the, what? how? Three minutes, I had three minutes yeah. on a comedy club stage to do my little, you know, I have four pages <laughs> of yuck yucks that I had written out yeah. that are garbage. All right. I have no reference. I've never done this. None of them hit. I tell four pages of jokes in 90 seconds. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> so I'm just dead in the water right, with right. 90 seconds to go. So I start, no, I don't panic, which thank God I didn't panic, but started to kind of like be, be myself for mm -hmm. a minute. Because I was like, said something like silly and people laughed and I was like, oh shit. Mm. And then was like, kind of showed a little bit of myself. Mm. And the minute I started to feel comfortable, the light came on. Uh, and I was like, I, if I, I that's symbolic too, like, oh, the terrified. Yeah. Terrified. Yeah. Like, because I, at this point, I've never done this before. So I'm thinking, if I run the light, by like a second, they're gonna take me out back and like hit me with sticks. Uh -huh. like, I was Break so your fingers, afraid of it. Yeah. Style. This is for three minutes and 15 <laughs> seconds. Like it felt very terrifying, mm. but I was like, I have a minute. And I kept reminding myself to breathe. And I kept reminding myself like, they like you right now. So I said a couple of jokes that I can't remember. I said a Tila tequila joke, I think it was oh, awful, damn. awful that's, stuff. That's yeah. the time. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> so I get off stage thinking like, well, that was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And just like, didn't know what to do. And I had um, Sean and Richard come up and be like, you're pretty good at this, mm. come with us. So I got pulled into it, two other open mics. The there first open mic I went to revealed two more. There you go. And then a couple more, a couple more, and a couple more. And you realize that there's this whole scene out there that you have no idea that it exists. Mm. So if you see an open mic and you feel like you need to get on that stage, go talk to them. Yeah. Because they'll tell you about the other two. Yeah. And they'll tell you about the three or four in town that you had no idea existed because everybody doing this is doing this for a different reason. Some people are amateurs and don't know how to do marketing or promotion. That's not their fault. But sometimes this stuff finds you. Yeah. And it hooked me day one. I went skateboarding with them for the rest of the night. Yeah. We did. Portland sounds very Portland. Comedy <laughs> until 2 a.m. We went to the Department of Skateboarding where we, it was like a dream. We literally walked in. And like Richard was like, do you like skating? And I was like, I love skateboarding. And I suck at skateboarding, but I was like, I just want to hang out with these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. We walked in the door thinking that we had like a half an hour to skateboard. They would stay open until like three in the morning. Mm. And he goes, we're open all night because they're closing us down in the morning. Oh. So I got to skateboard with two of my favorite comedians yeah. all night and just talk about comedy. Dude, that sounds like a dream. Dude, it's, it's a movie. Like, yeah. it's... I owe this to Richard Bain and Sean Jordan. Like that's what I do. This is why I love it Shout is because out. of those two guys. Shout out. Rest in peace, Sean. Rest in peace, Richard. Thanks for still being alive, Sean Jordan. He has a special coming out. He's here with us in this. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh for sure. Um, I had a very like different experience from Justin because <laughs> I'm from Los Angeles originally, and um, I I joke about it. You know, I thought that being famous was a birthright if you're from LA because mm -hmm. that's just like the pyramid scheme myth that you're told yeah. is like if you like back when when I was coming up nobody talked about Nepo babies nobody talked about like luck you yeah, know like yeah. it was really David Cross that was like the first person to put into my mind that like you know everybody comes to LA and okay. they're like put we're all gonna movie. make it and it's like maybe maybe ten will make it, yeah. you know. Aside from like the the like you know off one that like you know does does adult film or whatever. Right. But for me, um, 
My um, my dad knew that I was very into comedy when I was like 15, 16, and he knew like at the time they called it alt comedy. So those were oh, the yeah. comedians that I liked, mm -hmm. and like he it back again in Los Angeles in the week in the LA Weekly. There were two places. It was the M Bar and. Um, uh, Largo, which was an Italian restaurant, that all they put was comedy, Italian food, and they would list like three or four of the names that were going to be there that night. Like featuring? And, like, well, just just put names. They oh, didn't okay. even put featuring. They didn't really put comedy night or anything like that. It was just like you know, comedy at Largo. Uh, Entree minimum, and they would list things special like, of the day. Salmon. And they would list things like <laughs> Dana Gould, um, Blaine Kapach, um, uh, yeah, Well, um, when I when I before you got there, because um, again I'm 15, 16 at yeah. the time. Um, Zach Galifianakis, Pat oh, Oswalt, wow. stuff like that. So literally, and and this was like a place where you had to be 21 to get in. Uh -huh. So my dad was my chaperone. We would sit and watch uh, eat Italian food, and then the next day in high school, I'd be like, "Hey, you know the male guy from Just Shoot Me? <laughs> he does this awesome bit about action figures from Mexico, and it's like hilarious." Yeah. But I always had like you know in my mind like, okay, I can admire these people. I can like like what they're about, but like. You know, at the time, it was like, women aren't funny, you know? And then I started seeing people like Maria Bamford and like, you know, um, Janine Garofalo mm -hmm. and Margaret Cho and Wanda Sykes and people like that. Mm -hmm. And I had so much reverence for stand-up comedy that I was like afraid to even try it for a moment. Yeah. And I also had a background as an actor. So there was a stigma in LA where it's like, well, Back if you're an actors. actor, you're not a stand-up. Yeah. You're just an opportunist trying to get another showcase. Right. Which so is so I had stupid. like a lot of internalized stuff that I needed to just like break away. But like, you know, I it was always undeniable that no matter what like social setting I was in, I'm always going to tell you a story. Yeah, to yeah. the point where people would stop me and be like, Do you do stand up? Oh, like what are you what and and it happened so much that I was just like you know, again, go back to the newspaper and look at the learning annex, and there was a guy named Perry Kurtz, who still does stand-up, bless him, who was teaching a class when I was 17 years old. So I went and I did that class, and I was so, like, bursting with wanting to do it that my skills were nowhere where they needed to be. Because uh -huh. all I was basically doing was taking my life stories and like making it in the voice of Eddie Izzard, who I idolized at the time. So I was trying to do this like stream of con consciousness mm -hmm. thing based on this guy that I really admired. And he looked at me and he was like, you're funny but I don't know what to do with any of this. <laughs> so I didn't do it for a long time. I did I did improv for a bit, um, and I always went, still went to comedy shows, but um, it was when I was doing um, theater and um, met Justin that uh, I started, um, so we, we got together and moved in together very, very quickly when after we had met, and he was, you know, with this like Portland people that came down to LA and we were all very, very broke. So we lived in a house with a bunch of stand up comedians. Oh, okay. And through that, one of their friends was doing a class. And I, so this was like my early 20s. And I went to his class uh, and I was just like, okay. And from his class, he booked me on a show. Shout out Ed Galvez. Um, <laughs> He booked me on one of his shows, and I started doing it from there. But I, I still had that like internalized thing of like, well, I'm a performer, right. so I'm cheating. And like, once you free yourself from all of that, then it's just like, like you were saying, like you know, getting into the like, I'm, I'm a storyteller. I'm like, because it's all about like appealing to the group mind. And then selling chicken fingers right. if you book, you know, <laughs> and clubs and stuff. So, uh, the first time I, no one asked, but the first time I did comedy, <laughs> <laughs> I was I going to. We I were you know, hosting, so we figured that was coming. <laughs> well, no, it was like Pasadena. Yeah, uh, oh, I did okay. the Ice House, okay. uh, and it was three minute mics. When I started, oh, wow. when I first started doing comedy, I was yeah. driving from out here, yeah. banding all the way to Pasadena mm. every Wednesday. 
sign up for the open mic. You had to write it on the back of a receipt. Oh, yeah. You might go up. You might not. Right. The, just... the whole writing on the back of a receipt thing is if you if you walk in and you have so much courage and then they're like, you got to buy a cheeseburger. <laughs> now write your name down. Write your name. Maybe we'll call you. The yeah. And it's you can, so good. The more you the more you buy, the more tickets you get. I yeah. That was me and Sunset Grill. <laughs> eventually, I started printing out with the, trick, the ticket tape for my job and started paying myself. Oh, that's myself. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, the gas alone. Big bar and steel, man. Yeah. Killing me, man. They're killing me. So, yeah. yeah. So, I like, can have fries or I can make it home. Yeah. I'll do it for sure. Yeah. And then the first time, I luckily I went up the first time. Mm. Thank God. I oh, would wow. now probably be doing this. And then I went up there. I did uh, started with a couple of cat jokes. My go-to. Mm. If, you guys, if you guys are familiar with my comedy. I was into Twin Peaks at the time. So oh, I threw yeah. in a couple of Twin Peaks references. Nice. Talking about... Uh, my New Year's resolution was to stop going to bars because... I always go to bars trying to find my dream girl. I go to those cool hip bars, trying to give me one of them Laura Palmer's that you're so much about, you know? Twin Peaks. Daddy issues. It's very really hard to find daddy issues. Well, I'm looking for. It works. <laughs> 10% of the time yep. there's a yeah. few people that are like oh like Twin Peaks <laughs> but that, but but it was kind of like a steady thing like that and it was kind of I was like damn I, I was like my voice was all shaky mm. and I was kind of quiet and then I finally got to that one joke like towards the set toward that set up the last my last joke and the fucking room erupted mm -hmm. and I was like oh thank god mm -hmm. yeah like, it's a thank dopamine god. it was dopamine yeah. like yeah. like I never like I never had before yeah. and yeah. It, we're talking like some some comedians that tour with uh, I don't even know their name. Um, they tour with like uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with the mullet. Uh, Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Gray was hosting at the time, and a bunch of guys that are doing big things nowadays. But yeah, it was a room full of those guys, and so it was very. When uh, was this? What year? We're talking 2018, 19. Oh wow! That's when I started. I. Wow. Guarantee you, I knew three people in that room. Yeah, yeah those, those guys were those guys were doing it. And they're still doing it yeah. to this yeah, day. Jen Jen Saunderson was there. Oh yes, yes, yes. You know, like for me, like I don't really, um, I don't listen to Kill Tony. Like I, I don't, don't either. Yeah. I, 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 I like a lot of people. Like, what do you like? You're a comedian. Do you listen to Kill Tony? Like, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to. I go to open mics already. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to. Open it's too abrasive for me personally. Mm -hmm. Like, I, nothing against anybody. No, no. Listens to I want to be on it. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> I don't listen to it. Yeah. I just completely like you know. I was not. A, I'm not a big Howard Stern person. Yeah. I get uncomfortable when other people are uncomfortable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've watched enough people on Kill Tony get their heart broken on Kill mm -hmm. Tony. Yeah. It's not my favorite. Yeah. Like I don't like. I listen to a lot of. Uh, I listen to Soder, yeah, yeah. and I, I listen to I listen to optimistic things. I really like Stavi's world. Like, oh yeah, come where, down. Yeah, oh, God. God, cool. I know, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> the worst is like I love all of that stuff because that stuff like at the heart of it, no matter how gross and like weird it is, yeah. it's all generated towards helping everybody. Yeah. Yeah. it's generated towards helping the callers. Right, right. Um, Soder Come Town was not generated in helping anybody. No, no, <laughs> that's what I like about Stavi's world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a breakaway from it, and I yeah. feel like. Every time I try to listen to the bonfire, like, be, like I love Dan Soder. I'm not. That's my line though. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not a big Jay Okerson fan. Yeah. I respect what he does, but it's not my type of comedy. Yeah, yeah. But I, I re like if I relate with somebody and they're doing a one-on-one -on -one talk show, I'm on board. I'm gonna listen right. to that podcast all the time. And then uh, I think the the point of comedy. Yeah. I mean, when when you're shooting shooting the shit with friends, like with me and my friends get together and we do the podcast, we like we we do like an Owen Open Anthony type of thing where we just, all right, we're gonna we're gonna give each other nudge each other, give each other a little shit. But you it know each other. Yeah, we know each other. Yeah. The difference when you're a stand-up comedian, you don't want to attack the audience. Yeah. Right. I don't like. There's some people like. Like for me with comedy, mm -hmm. like I don't care what you say. You can say whatever. Yeah. If yeah. you want to say the most out fucked up shit. Yeah. That's on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, like some people say the, the R word. The of you, course, yeah. yeah. I, I don't feel comfortable. Like I don't say that. I'll, I'll make jokes about any race. Like yeah. any, well, I don't, I don't go crazy. Like sure. I make so fun myself, whatever, and uh, other stuff. Kind of like toe the line, but I don't go with like the R word because right. I had an experience where. The words been thrown around, someone didn't like it, and then I 
understood why. So that's me. It's empathy. Yeah. Well, I you don't understand that it's hurting And somebody. to make it a positive thing, if I yeah. could, like what I like about what I see happening in the, in the comedy scene across the board right now is this conversation of there are people who are choosing to acknowledge the material they did in the past and evolve and the people that are doubling down. Mm. And I feel like everybody has their reasons for doing whatever, mm. but I really like am glad to see that there's so much support for people who want to evolve yeah, yeah, and yeah. want to like still take it to that level of like, okay, I'm appealing to the group mind mm. instead of the lowest common denominator. Right, right. Because you can always take a joke from a popsicle stick and punch down yeah, yeah. and there's gonna be a response, mm. but an awkward laugh is not necessarily the uncomfortable laugh, whatever. That's not necessarily the laugh that I'm going yeah. for. And I feel like you that's, know? I feel like it's across the board too, because it's, there's, comedians that I grew up with and that I love and that you know have taught me a lot in comedy that to be honest I can't listen to anymore yeah because they're they the train left the station and they're sitting on the on the paddock like yeah. they're not they didn't they decided personally not to get on board with how the world is shaking out yeah. and how people are feeling this is a this is a I almost said I almost said hobby. This is a profession that you should be doing to make the most of your audience feel comfortable. Yeah. And if you are a rabble rouser and you are out there to make feel make people feel bad about themselves, maybe it's not for you. Mm. But you're not gonna get that same love back yeah. from an audience if you're doing that. Yeah. And it's just personally that's how I feel no, about it. I agree. And I feel like there's plenty of reasons for. I'll use it as an example because it's a fairly fresh example, is Jerry Seinfeld. Right. I love Seinfeld. Yeah. I love growing up with the things he did. I read his book in fourth grade, not understanding most of it, <laughs> and like going through just like the way that he would say things and listen to his cadence and things like that. Last 10 years, he has said some things that make me uncomfortable watching Jerry Seinfeld do his job. Mm. And the reason is, is because I'm starting to see parts of him that maybe they weren't always there, maybe they're coming up as he's getting older, but they're offensive to people that I hold near and dear to myself. Yeah, yeah. So am I gonna stay with the guy that's being hateful? Right. Whether he knows it or not, right. or am I going to trust my friend who I care more about and their, you know, feelings about things because those are personal yeah and like he's speaking from a place he doesn't understand where my friend is speaking from a personal place mm, yeah. well and that's where you see a lot of like quality really come through in these people that can like appeal to literally every audience because mm -hmm. i don't think it's about changing people's minds i don't think, so I don't think it's about censoring people it's i think smart. it's about like being the best one mm -hmm. and like okay you can tell an offensive joke if it's funny yeah. to everyone, including exactly. the person yeah. that you're offending. But exactly. if you're taking like these groups and that are sometimes facing like life and death circumstances yeah. based yeah. on like they're just acceptance in existing, yeah. then it's like, okay, what are we doing? Especially, and the only time that I really take hard issue with it, with the people that will then backpedal and say, Oh, but it's funny because I'm not really like that. Uh -huh. And, and it's how like, dare you hold up a shield? And it's just like being sarcastic yeah. in an improv scene. Right. Like it doesn't work because mm. you're telling us your world as you see it. Mm. And if you're insincere with that because you're trying to get an easy laugh, mm. then what are we even yeah. doing here, man? Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, with with with. With the sign with Seinfeld and even like uh, Kevin James and stuff, mm -hmm. it's just like when they go too into like, and everyone's so sensitive. It's like, dude, it's not about being sensitive. It's about being funny. Or Tim Allen, yeah, yeah. Like it's like Tim Allen's whole thing with like, well, they canceled my show because nobody understands good comedy anymore. No, because you're getting lazy. Right. Yeah. Because you're telling jokes to your friends that are all yes men, right. yeah. all around you that are more than willing to say, absolutely, Tim, give me another 20 grand. Right, right. Fuck that shit, yeah. I'm in this to be funny. Yeah. It's There goes my sorry. work with Tim Allen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, he's a coke dealer. But, <laughs> but it's great that like, we, we there goes do, my coke dealer. you sorry. know, it, ideally like have these like values of like, you know, we, we have a freedom of speech, but there's also, must also be a recognition of consequence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, say whatever the fuck you want. And if you are strong enough 
to face opposition to that, mm -hmm. more power to you. Yeah. Especially if you're funny. Yeah. But don't like make yourself a victim yeah. knowing that well, I'm going to say something that you don't yeah. like, and then, oh, you, know? uh, the, 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 you can't go shine in that light and then shy away from it when yeah. it comes back. But it's There's a difference between a rabble rouser and a leader. Be up there to be a leader. Don't be up there to make people upset and then leave. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not fair. Like a good example of Shane Gillis. Like, mm -hmm. he yeah. can say some crazy shit, but at the end of the day, everyone laughs. Right. Like, I feel like, yeah, he goes off, he says some shit, and it's whatever, but I still fucking laugh my ass off. And it's, I know people that would, like, be offended. They, they laugh. They're like, oh, that was pretty funny. At the end of the day, it's everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. If you're going anywhere, like you say, you go to the Rock Gallery, Mike, for the first time, and you want to Wednesdays stay, at 7. Wednesdays at 7. <laughs> Wednesdays at 7. No, but like I said, don't come to the Rock Gallery, Mike, and uh, have consideration. Like, you can say whatever you want. But don't bring the place down with you. You know what I mean? Be we're still funny. a community. Like we're, we're still, there to right. support. Everyone's yeah. there, so. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much Rick, for, thanks for having us. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah. I look forward to seeing more of you oh, guys. Oh, can I do can I do plugs before? Yeah, no, absolutely. We're yeah. Gonna, okay, cool. I, look, I look forward to working more with you guys. Yeah. And then let's have plug any upcoming shows you guys cool. have going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, August 1st, which is Thursday, which should be right around when this comes out, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have a secret headliner show taking place at the Rock Gallery, so we're going to have giveaways. And uh, we have a local business that's uh, provided mm. us a lot of stuff. Uh, and we have uh, people with, like, specials that are coming out from Los Angeles just like to do a show for everybody it's 10 bucks it's on the rock galleries QR codes you can buy tickets at the door um, August uh, 15th we have uh, first and 15th I'm hosting shows there there's another producer that hosts shows there as well you can always catch a good show there the underscore rock underscore gallery at Instagram uh, and then you can also catch me at uh, the Savage Henry Comedy Festival you. in Eureka California Eureka. August 10th through the 12th uh, and then August or April fifteenth, April Jesus, August fifteenth. We also have a show coming up at the Rock Gallery that's going to be a pretty big show as well with Chris Thayer uh, and Belinda Carroll coming out from San Diego to come join us as well. And then um, Savage Henry Comedy Festival, October tenth through the twelfth in Eureka, California. You can buy tickets online at Savage Henry Comedy, and you can uh, get. All of your information for Savage Henry Comedy Festival on Instagram at Savage Henry Comedy. Um, it's going to be a good time. We have Ben Roy, ho or Ben Roy is headlining, and Ron Lynch is also headlining. Uh, more details to come on that one as well. And then, uh, so let's see. August 2nd, I will be at CB Brewing uh, for an all female comedy lineup. Very excited about Ooh. that. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see, August 4th. Fourth. Fourth, we're having our very first Sunday skillet. So the best of the open mic from this week is going to be given 10 minute spots on that show. And then August 16th, which is a Friday at the Rock Gallery, I'm doing Heckler's Delight, where audience members will be encouraged to heckle the comedians. No. Normally and, it is uh, a big no-no to heckle. This is one of the only shows where you, can, you get encouraged to heckle the comedians. That's on right. Mm. And like Justin was saying, just follow the Rock Gallery on Instagram uh, so we don't have to buy targeted ads anymore. There you <laughs> go. Oh, and you can follow me on Instagram at just J O S T L E N T Z. Uh, that is my Instagram, which is just Lentz. Uh, that's, uh, I don't use Facebook because I'm not 70 years old. Yeah. So. And I'm Krusty Old Barnacle because, right? That's a great name. <laughs> that's a great name. Thank you. And thank you so much, Rick. Yeah, no, thank you. And then uh, you can. Uh, August 7th, open mic, right? I uh, if that's a Wednesday. That's then a yes, Wednesday. Absolutely. Every Wednesday at 7. Yep. That's going to, I don't know if you guys knew about this, but I'm going to be doing a little uh, behind the scenes filming of that open mic. Ooh, fun. Yeah, oh, fuck. Oh, Abe was telling us about that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I was super Very excited cool. about that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to be capturing that with, with this fine equipment you guys Yeah, see. it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be fine. So yeah, if, you guys are, uh, if you guys are coming, Prepare to be filmed, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a little uh, supportive, um, like promotional video for uh, for these uh, fine folks out there, out here in Palm Springs. That's awesome. Thank um, you. you can catch me August twenty second at uh, Metabolic Brewing in Ontario, California. It's a first comedy show of uh, of that place. They're um, they I've, this has been a long time coming. It's been like three years now. They've been, they've been trying. They, they've been trying. They booked me like three years ago. Finally, the place is open. 
I'm on the first show. Come out and support. Oh, yeah. The that, first comedy show is always valuable because it allows us as producers and bookers to say, hey, look how many people we brought out. Yeah. So the more supportive you can be about your local comedy acts, the better. We always really, really support that. I appreciate that, Justin. Yeah, so Thank come you. out there August 22nd. It's going to be a good time. Um, uh, next, um, the 6th, August 6th, I'll be judging uh, the Ontario Rose Tournament Championship. I'll also be doing 10 minutes on that show. Hey. I'll be judging uh, the tag team the tag team uh, turn. I'll be just judging the whole roast, <laughs> but the tag team belt, which uh, which is mine and Sandy's belt, I will be judging the guys that are competing for that. We took a little break this month, so now we're just watching. Now I'm going to be judging. I don't know if that's a conflict of interest. Yeah. I'm gonna decide. I'm gonna vote for the person who's the weakest of our competition <laughs> to compete against. Now, nah, but uh, no, nah, I'm just kidding. But I'll be I'll be there also on the sixth. On the 7th, I'll be at the Rock Gallery filming, August 22nd, Metabolic Brewing, Ontario Improv. And yeah, I think that's, oh, Bra you know, I already know, Bravo X Comedy, the static hour. And guys, Justin, Emily, thank you guys awesome. so thank much you. for doing Thanks this. Thanks again, Rick. Yeah. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We'll now, see you next time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now I'm off to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>